I have a quick little project to show you today. It's one that I'm really excited about. Just started on it a few days ago and I'm already loving it. I started out with a binder. This is one that Taylor had from when she was in school. It was left over. It was <laughs> one of the few that wasn't cracked and broken. Um, so just a regular binder and of course it's small and, and I need huge. I just don't have any huge binders on hand and I'm not buying stuff right now. So I'm just using what I have but I'm, I'm gonna have to expand later and that's fine. This is good for now but just any any binder and this one is got that um, plastic coating on it you know which can be a challenge to glue on but not impossible. Spray glue works really well for these. So what I did was took this big piece of painted paper, took it outside, put spray glue on it, and it just stuck right down to that plastic without a problem. What this is, this is a, you know, I have some Happy Mail journals that I'm working on that I put um, different Happy Mail ephemera in. This is exclusively for Happy Mail um, painted papers and handmade ephemera. Now, when someone makes me a card or a book or a journal or a, 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 a decorative tag or something like that, I, that goes up on the Happy Mail wall. I have a place for that. This is for extra parts and pieces. I get sent a lot of painted paper, which I absolutely love. I mean, jelly prints, hand-painted paper, uh, drop papers, scraps, doodles. Uh, I, I absolutely love it. And I've collected, I'm pretty sure, every single little piece that I've been sent <laughs> I have saved. And I keep it separate from everything else because I have a hard time using it. And it's not because I don't love it or I don't have a use for it. Oh my gosh, I do. The reason why I have trouble using things like that, like this paper, which surrounded a box of Happy Mail, the reason I have trouble using it is because I, I'm, I'm pretty good at remembering that I got it in Happy Mail, but I can't always remember exactly whose Happy Mail it was, and most of the time it's not signed, which is fine. You know, I would feel weird signing a piece of drop paper. <laughs> That's just strange. <laughs> I would send this to someone. This is nice, you know, but would I sign it? Probably not. <laughs> so yeah, I get it. That's not a big deal. You best sign your cards and artwork and, you know, stuff that you send that goes up on the wall because that is important. But your scraps and things, it, that would be weird to sign them. So yeah, I, you know, I get it. But it, it, it's also one of the reasons that makes it hard for me to use these things because they would look beautiful in projects and every single one of them are just right up my alley, but I don't want it to appear that I'm passing them off as my own. You know what I'm saying? And I know that the people who sent them don't care. They sent them for me to use. You know, I fully get that. I fully understand that. But I just, there's just that little weirdness in me that wants to honor the fact that it was made by someone else. And I don't want to do anything that makes it look like that I'm, I'm passing it off as my own. I'm just weird that way, okay? <laughs> just give me that. Just let me, let me have that weirdness. But I've come up with a solution that I'm loving. What I'm doing is taking all of those little um, hand-painted scraps and parts and pieces and I've put them in this three-ring binder. I covered it with the uh, paper. I remember this was from Tammy Damron because it was just recently that I did the video on this. So I remember that. I glued it down and then I gave it a, a clear coat of uh, just, I think it was Mod Podge, matte finished Mod Podge, which, you know, does have a little bit of a sheen. And then on the inside, I used some washi tape to go around the edges because I didn't want to bother with trying to trim it even. You know, it was just an outer wrapping that I ripped off. and It was in one good piece, but the edges were jagged. and I didn't want to have to measure and get it right. So I just covered the, uh, you know, folded it over, glued the edges down, and then covered the jagged edges with some washi tape so that it wouldn't show. Easy peasy. Slit the washi tape right here so that this clear pocket that was in the binder would open. Then what I did was I took all of the larger pieces, you know, the like eight and a half by 11, those kind of things, punched them for the binder and stuck them in. If they were postcard size, about postcard size or bigger, 
they went in the rings and if I, you know like if I could punch two holes in it it was it went in here so I did that all through here did some of them front ways some of them backwards you know variety big ones small ones just all kinds of beautiful papers that I have been sent over the years they're in here and this this is enough for me right here like this we could call this done I'm happy this makes me happy to flip through and look at it's it's fabulous right and then in this back pocket these are happy mail um, stickers and labels that I've received that people have made okay this is a sticker you're just gonna, there it is <laughs> So, you know, the two or three different people have made and sent me um, stickers. And then I have some extra large pieces back here. And then I found a few more that were I had stored in another spot because they were really big. And I remember this because this is some of the first happy mail I got, too. This, I say two. I just responded to a uh, YouTube comment, and it was someone who watched one of my first happy mail videos. So I had that on my mind. <laughs> weird. It's weird how I did that. Okay. This, um, Gina Ahrens did these. These are uh, digital printouts of her original artwork, which is incredible. Nice, big sheets. And I forgot about it when I was gathering up all my stuff because it was in another spot because of the size. So what I can do, I may hold on to these because I know that this binder is going to have to um, expand someday. You can see it's pretty full. And so when I get a new binder, I'm going to need to cover it I might use these so I'm just gonna hang on to those for now but everything else went in here if it was sheet size if I could punch at least two holes in it I put it in here envelopes book pages drop papers I mean jelly prints collage everything and this is just this is fantastic I love this then what I did, I set aside all the smaller pieces and scraps and things, and I've just shoved them in this pocket here. And I'm going through and decorating some of the larger pages with the smaller pieces. Like I said, I can't remember who made what. Doesn't matter. I'm just putting stuff on there, not, not necessarily making themes or matchy-matchy, just putting it down. <laughs> you know the routine, right? So I had this cute little coin envelope that I attached to this, um, looks like a jelly print, and I've been using a lot of the Helmar, uh, what is it, give me a minute, here it is, Quick Fix Permanent Adhesive Runner, and let me tell you what, this surprised me, it is super sticky. <laughs> this was, like this piece right here is a coffee filter, and I cut it into quarters like this because you know it makes perfect little corner pockets for some of these larger sheets so that's what I did and then I used this tape runner and this is weird to glue down right because it's almost like a fabric but it's paper and it's kind of delicate but not you know it's weird man this just grabbed right hold which I was afraid it would just pick up the fibers and not stick well mm -mm. it held perfectly and it has stuck like crazy so okay that thing surprised me it's impressive so I stuck that there, put something there. I might put a little something, something there, a little something, something here. But I put this here because this was here and it showed. And this is just a coffee dot uh, doily. And then a handmade um, doodled flower on there. And for that, I used Helmar 450 Quick Dry because, you know, it's awesome. It's, a, it's that, you know, snotty <laughs> consistency gel stuff. <laughs> That goes on but it dries really fast so it doesn't there's no buckling it, it doesn't have time to buckle so that was perfect went down flat um, awesome and then this little uh, painted flower jelly print doodle piece that I have a few of them that uh, someone sent just beautiful little look on a magazine you know this is a person after my own heart right here and okay here was one on a book page or no this is a magazine too it's glossy and I just stuck it to the back of this jelly print because there wasn't anything on the back so that is my plan this is as far as I've gotten because it's a brand new plan but I'm just going to go through this book using 
all of these Happy Mail parts and pieces. There's a few die cuts in here that I really wouldn't have a problem using in projects, but since I have this going on, I pulled them out of my supply binder and thought, okay, yeah, I'm going to put these in here. See, I could just, I could do that. How fun is that? I mean, you already have all of your supplies here and all of your, your background pages are already done. Now all I can I have to do is just, I can sit down on the couch with you know, a wet glue and a dry glue and watch TV and go to town. Okay? Okay, now if you're saying, oh yeah, great for you, Shannon, but I don't have, I don't get happy mail. You know, I can't really do that. Oh, come on, people. Think outside the box. You can do this with your own stuff. <laughs> you have your own painted papers and scraps and drop papers and pieces. And, you know, we're journaling for no reason. I am 110% on board with this whole journaling for no reason thing and and I love it and I'm getting so much positive feedback from y'all I know you're loving it so let's let's just love the heck out of it until we get tired of it and just do as much as possible this is another journal for no reason it it's easy it's portable um, you know, it's super simple. You get a, a piece of drop paper, just rip it into manageable sizes, stuff it in your binder, then when you have a chance, glue it down to other pages and make something pretty even prettier and, and personalize it. And this, I, I just can't tell you how much fun this was just to, to put this together, which took me every bit of maybe five minutes. Okay, now the punching the holes and the putting the pages in, that took quite a while because, you know, I'm trying to achieve perfect randomness. Big sheet, little sheet, big sheet, little sheet. Okay. <laughs> you know, my little OCD took over there. But the putting the stuff together, because I'm not, you know, you can if you want to, but I'm not putting like colors together. I'm not doing a theme. I'm not putting that much thought into it. I'm just doing because it's fun. It's enjoyable. And you can do this with your own scraps and painted papers. Think um, swaps. You know, you get all kinds of cards and tags and ephemera and stuff and swaps and maybe you're not really doing anything with it. It's just sort of accumulating. Make you a binder like this and put those things into a binder to just display and enjoy. So there you go. That is my little um, idea. That is just one more project that I'm working on. <laughs> Um, and I'm loving it, and so I thought that you might too, and I wanted to share that with you. So, that is all I have. What should we call this? See, I'm thinking, I need a title for this video. What's it going to be? Um, ha happy Mail, Hand Painted Happy Mail. Hand Painted Happy Mail? Painted Happy Mail? Happy Mail Binder? It's more than just Happy Mail. I mean, it's it's not more than just Happy It's a specific type of Happy Mail. You know, this is... This is um, just for the um, hand-painted pieces. Painted Happy Mail. I don't know. Why am I filming this? I should be thinking of this on my own. Okay, clearly I'm done. The end. <laughs>